So you guys know it by now, but the GED loves area, perimeter, and volume problems. Okay, and you have some options when you go to work with them. Let's take a look at this particular problem. It's a pretty straightforward one as far as GED ones go. One little trick that we have a fraction, but don't worry about that. So I see the problem says find the area. So I've been asked to find area of a square with a side length of two thirds of an inch. So first of all, let's remember what area is. Area is basically the number of square units it takes to cover a shape. Some people call it the inside. I would encourage you not to call it the inside because then you'll mix it up with volume. It's the number of square units to cover a shape. Think of it as covering. We're covering a shape, okay? So, um, now this one's interesting because um, our shape is really small. We can see that it's just two thirds of an inch uh, it's a square, right? Find the area of a square with a side length of two-thirds of an inch. And so if you think about it, like a square unit would be, like think about a square inch, it would be something bigger than this because a square inch would be one inch by one inch. But we have something less than that because our thing is only two-thirds of an inch by two-thirds of an inch. So imagine that I cut this little square into two-thirds of an inch and this little guy into two-thirds of an inch. Okay, so I cut it into three pieces, one, two, three, and if I have two of those, I go up to here. And then same thing here, I cut it up to three, one, two, three, and I only have two of those, so it goes up to here. So you can see that I, with only two-thirds of an inch by two-thirds of an inch, I actually have something less than one square inch. Can you see that it would be less than one square inch? But what would it be? Um, two ways to do this. Um, you can just remember, a lot of students just remember that when I have a square or a rectangle, the easy way to do this is just to multiply the two sides. So I see a lot of students who just remember that with squares and rectangles, uh, that you can just multiply the two dimensions, and they just multiply two-thirds times two-thirds. And you can do this in your calculator if you want to, but you really don't need to because it's super simple um, to multiply fractions. Remember that you just cross reduce if possible, and I can't, and then you just multiply numerator times numerator and denominator times denominator. So I get this answer four ninths. Be really, really careful though. A geometry problem isn't done without a unit. So four ninths what? Well, notice you were multiplying inches by inches. And so what you're going to end up with is four ninths of a square inch. Just like two times two is the same as two squared, inches times inches is the same as square inches. Now, this is not math to do. When I put that little floating two, this is just me being too lazy to spell out square inches. Okay, that's how mathematicians abbreviate square inch, okay? Don't get confused and think this two needs to go work on this four ninths. That's not the truth. Um, it's just my shortcut way of writing out square inches, okay? So that's the answer, four ninths of a square inch. And that makes sense if you think about the definition, because I said the definition was the number of square units. Area is always a square unit. Now, so that's one way to solve this problem if you remember that wonderful trick. What if you don't remember? You're like, Kate, I don't remember how to find area, and when I take that GED test, I forget everything I ever knew. And that's fine. If that's you, go to your GED formula sheet. Let the formula sheet guide you. If you go look at the formula sheet and you look in the area section, you'll see a formula for area of a square. It looks like this. A equals S with a little floating two. One of the interesting things you should know is that the way you read this little floating two is the word squared. Hello, area equals s squared. To find the area of a square, uh, you square the side length. And um, that now you know how this little floating two got its nickname. We call it square because of this particular formula that it's involved in. Uh, but what does this mean? Uh, this means, let's go ahead and plug into this formula. Area is the thing I'm looking for, so it remains an a. S, the side length of the square, is something I know. It's not a mystery. Come look at this. The side length is two-thirds of an inch. Well, if it's not a mystery, there's no reason to call it S. You can call it two-thirds. Be really careful when plugging fractions into exponential expressions. When there's an exponent, you should use parentheses so that that entire fraction can get raised to the second power. Now, if you wanted to, you could type this entire thing into your calculator. Um, I'm going to show you how in a TI-30XS. Um, 
And so the first thing you want to do is put in this uh, parenthesis. You can put parentheses in your calculator, so go ahead and open up a parenthesis for me. Now, to get a fraction in your calculator, you press the N over D button. N over D button. And now you should be able to navigate around, typing in two thirds into the fraction that results. So let's take a look. I'm going to try it in my calculator because depending on what mode you're in, it can be a little different. Okay, there's two different modes in your calculator. So uh, I'm in math mode. It was really easy to type two thirds. When I typed n over d, it just made a fraction, and I typed in two, and then I arrowed down to the bottom of my fraction that it made and typed in three. But it's going to be really important because my cursor will be blinking down here with the three to use the right arrow to move out of the fraction. So I press right arrow, I get out of the fraction then, and then I can close my parentheses. And then you might be wondering, well, how do I square this? There's a button, it's the X squared button. You just type that and it'll square it and press enter. And you should get that the area is equal to four ninths. Okay. Um, which is what we were expecting. The same answer we got before, yay, just like we were expected. And just as before, area is always measured in square units. So I won't just write inches, I'll write square inches. Square inches. Now, maybe you're mad at me because your calculator didn't work this way. It might be that your calculator is not in math print mode. The TI-30XS works best for fractions when you're in math print mode. I recommend that any time you want to type a fraction in, you make sure you're in math print mode. So how are we going to do that? You're going to hit the mode button. Mode. Mode. You're going to go down to the last line, and you're going to see the last line has two options. There's classic, and there's math print. Classic works like a more old-fashioned, more basic calculator. It gives you decimal answers, but it also is kind of a pain when you want to do um, fractions or you want to do order of operations. If you want to do a lot of the mathematical operations, um, the higher advanced ones we learn, math print is going to be the way to go a lot of the times. So arrow down to math print, make sure you're blinking on it, your cursor's blinking on it, and then press enter. Now you've selected math print, but we have to exit the screen. Quickest way to do that is to just press the clear button. And now you're back in your screen and you should be able to type that expression in up here. So again, parentheses, N over D button is your fraction button. Arrow around to put in two thirds. Make sure you get out of your fraction and close the parentheses and X squared. And there we go, four ninths.